I am Mama Liz Lodeholt, Liz Lodeholt, manager of office with Agent Own Realty Company, and I'm going today to talk about from contract to closing. I've got a ratified contract, now what do I do? First of all, let's be sure the contract is ratified, and how do we do that? All changes on the contract have been initial and dated. You want to be sure that you have all changes dated. This is critical and can save you from a lawsuit down the road. Has the contract been signed by all parties and dated? Has the contract been delivered to the buyer or the buyer's agent? And has the earnest money been delivered? Sometimes the contract is written with the earnest money, you get it with the contract, and other times it's, it is a promise to pay in a certain length of time or by a certain date. So you want to be sure that you have, the, if the contract says the earnest money is present, make sure you have the earnest money. And never sign the contract saying you have earnest money unless you actually have it in hand. I have a lot of horror stories about that. We won't go into that today, but just be sure that if the contract, if, if you sign saying you have earnest money, be sure you actually have that money. Now, what are the office procedures when you have a ratified contract? You want to turn the contract in to the office admin person as soon as possible after ratification. If agent owners to keep the earnest money, you want to turn that check in with the contract to your office admin. Please do not put the contract and earnest money in the trunk of your car and ride around for a couple of three weeks. Please turn it in ASAP after ratification of the contract. If you have a copy of the existing title insurance policy, we want you to turn that in also to your office admin. She will keep it for reissue credit. Your office admin will then enter the information into the office computer. Wally Burbage and Associates Insurance will contact your buyers to offer them a quote for homeowner's insurance. So be sure and tell your buyers to expect a call from Wally Burbage and Associates. It may be uh, Allstate Wally Burbage and Associates or it might be Alliance Insurance. If the contract indicates an attorney that's on one of our alliance attorneys, then your office admin will send the notice to the attorney. This is not, and I emphasize not, a request for title search, but simply a notice. So it's still up to you to contact the attorney or your client to contact the attorney. The office admin will not schedule a closing and will not send a contract to the closing to, to the attorney. The office admin then files a hard copy in the locked file cabinet. Your office admin and broker have a key to that cabinet. And this is uh, South Carolina Real Estate Law. That's why we have to lock it up. What's next? You want to check the contract to make a list of important dates that must be met. I'm going to put these dates in your day timer or your Google Calendar, wherever it is that you keep up with things. First of all, your homeowner's insurance. Make sure that you get a homeowner's insurance within, uh, well, before closing, for sure. Keep up with that. Sometimes homeowner's insurance can knock someone out from qualifying for a mortgage. So be sure and get that done early. Home inspection. Now, you know that you're going to have a home inspection. There's a date in your contract to have that done. Make sure that that date does not pass. Make sure you have the home inspection done within the time frame. This is critical. Earnest money. If the earnest money did not come with the contract, it is critical to watch the date when it is supposed to be paid and make sure you have it by then. Your mortgage application. You want to make sure that the mortgage application is made within the time frame that's on the contract. Covenants and restrictions. If, and hopefully, your contract is asking for a copy of covenants and restrictions, 
and usually it's with a certain length of time to get those from the seller. Make sure that that is abided by as well. Contingencies. If there are contingencies in the contract, usually there are dates on when those contingencies must be met. Be sure and keep up with those. Your mortgage approval date that's in your contract. Be sure and keep up with that and make sure that you get it within the time frame. Home warranty. Same thing. If you are supposed to have a home warranty with the contract, make sure you go ahead and get it done. Don't wait to the last minute. And the CL100 letter. And while we're saying CL100 letter, let me just say that that is not a state law that every contract must have a CL100. It just happens that our contracts call for CL100 most of the time. So just make sure that that is abided by, whatever the date is for that. Now, let's look at the mortgage. You want to follow up with the lender to be sure the application has been done within a lab time frame. Even if it's your listing sold, you want to follow up with the lender of the buyer to make sure that application has been done. You want to stay in touch with the lender to be sure that the mortgage process is going smoothly. You don't want to be surprised when closing is supposed to be taking place and the mortgage is not approved yet. You should know when the mortgage is approved. Remember to ask the lender if the approval is subject to any conditions. I will tell you right now, if you get a mortgage approval before closing date, then it's going to have conditions. So you need to make sure you know what those conditions are. Don't accept when a lender says, okay, we got approval. Always remember to ask, is this approval subject to any conditions? And if so, what are those conditions? Be sure the dates in your contract are met regarding pre-qualifying and approval. Your home inspection. You definitely want to have, be present when your home inspection is done. Some agents say they don't need to be there. I personally think you do need to be there. If you have the buyer or if it's your listing, you need to be present. We are professionals and this is part of what we get paid for. If you're representing the buyer, assist the buyer with compiling a list of items for the seller repair. Do not give copy of buyer's inspection report and say fix it all. That's just not very professional. Remember, the inspection belongs to the buyer. The buyer has paid for it and it belongs to the buyer. You cannot give a copy of that inspection to the other agent of the other side, the seller, unless permission from the buyer has been given. Put necessary repairs in form of an addendum to your contract. You want to have a place for the buyers and the sellers to sign. And you want to include a time frame for the seller to respond. Time frame should coincide with Addendum A time frame. Now I'm talking about the Addendum A that Agent Own recommends that all agents use so if you're not using Addendum A, then you need to make sure you have a time frame written in your special conditions of your contract because our regular contract does not give us that. Follow up to be sure the work has been completed prior to closing. And auto reinspection of repairs. I happen to think that it is worth the money to get the same inspector who did the inspection to go back and reinspect after the repairs have been done. Yes, it will cost a little bit of extra money, but I think it's worth the money. Now, your attorney. If you're representing the buyer, be sure that you know which attorney the buyer wants to use for closing. Call the attorney to schedule the closing. Be sure the buyer has not called a different attorney. If that is the case, you may own, end up owing a title search fee. So be sure there's only one attorney doing the title search. Just double check that with your buyer. You want to send a copy of the contract to the closing attorney as soon as you know who the closing attorney is. Let the closing attorney know if you have an existing title insurance policy. Because if you let them know early enough, it could save your buyer money 
on the title search if that title insurance policy is 10 years or younger. As I said, it may save you money on your title, title search as well as the reissue credit on your title insurance. Let your buyer know about the closing plan, the attorney's name, place, date, and time of closing. Let the co-op agent know of the attorney place, date, and time of closing. Now, we've had people show up at our office for a closing because the agent had not told them where their closing was taking place and they just assumed it would be at the office. So make sure everyone is aware of your closing place, date, and time. Be sure the attorney has homeowner's insurance binder information. Check with the attorney regarding the survey and elevation certificate. I always recommend everyone get a new survey, but a lot of attorneys say it's not necessary if the seller has a survey and they pass it on. I personally think you need a new survey. Things get changed and you don't want to find out about them later and then have someone come back on you. If the buyer doesn't want to get a new survey, you want to go on record that you suggested it. And you will need certified funds for closing. The week before closing, what are you going to do? If you're representing the buyer, be sure that the utilities are still on at the property. You're going to need these to be on for your walkthrough inspection prior to closing. I've had an agent go for a walkthrough inspection, be shocked that there was no electricity and it was just a couple hours before closing. They couldn't really check anything. That's not a good thing, not a good feeling. Follow up with the lender to be sure that all is okay for the closing. You want to be sure that all the conditions of the loan approval have been met. Follow up with the buyers to be sure that they have homeowner's insurance in place and that the attorney has that binder. You want to check on the survey and flood elevation. If it is in a mandatory flood zone, you're going to need a flood elevation certificate to prove the flood elevation of the house. So you need to be doing this, not wait till day of closing, because if you have to get an elevation certificate, it's going to be difficult to get it in a day's time. You want to check on the CL100. If it was supposed to be done prior to closing, which hopefully it was, you want to be sure that it was done. And if there were any repairs, those repairs have been done. Now, on the home inspection, reinspection. If you're going to have it reinspection, inspected, be sure that this has been ordered if it's needed to be done. The day before closing, if you're representing a buyer, Schedule a walkthrough inspection to be completed prior to closing. It's always good if you can do this the day before instead of the day of because in case there's something wrong, you have time to get them fixed. Be sure that the closing attorney has received the package from the lender. Oh, by going back up here, you need to make sure that the person has moved out and vacated the property. No need to do a walkthrough while the person is still living in the property. Be sure the closing attorney has received a package from the lender. And a lot of lenders are so late that attorneys get them two hours before closing and they don't like that at all. But don't plan on going to a, a closing unless that attorney has gotten the package from the lender. Call the closing attorney to get a copy of your HUD statement. If they have not gotten the package from the lender, they're not going to be able to give that to you the day before closing. But in a perfect world, you would be able to get that. You want to go over the HUD with your buyer and seller. It's best to go over that before you go to the closing. Be sure the CL100 is at the attorney's office. Be sure that your buyer knows how much money they need in certified funds. Usually they don't need to wait till an hour before closing to find this out. They need to know as far in advance as possible. Be sure that the attorney has the homeowner's insurance and the flood insurance. Now, we're getting to the exciting part. The day of closing. Perform the walkthrough inspection. If you've not already done it, you do it the day of closing. 
Be sure that all conditions of the contract have been met. This is your job as the agent to make sure all the conditions are met. A lot of agents think it's the attorney's responsibility, but it is not. It is your responsibility as the agent. And then we're going to go to the closing with the buyer or seller. For goodness sakes, please go to the closing. Don't be one of these agents that just lets your buyer or seller go without you. Again, we are professionals, and this is part of what we get paid for. Yay, we are now at the closing. What do we do here? You want to make sure that you have a calculator with you so that you can check the numbers on the HUD statement. If you've not already done so, but if you have, you want to make sure it's the same HUD that you checked. And the only time you're allowed to take the file out of the office, the office file, is when you go to closing. You may take the office file with you, especially if it is the only file. A lot of agents have duplicate files, and that's fine as long as a copy of everything that you have in your file is in the office file. Go over the HUD statement. Check the numbers on the HUD statement with your calculator. Attorneys do make mistakes every now and then, believe it or not. Be sure the commission check is correct and made out properly to the correct agency. I've had agents pick up commission checks, get it back to the office, and it was made out to the co-op agency. Not a good feeling when you have to turn around and go back to the attorney's office. Also, sometimes the attorneys subtract the earnest money from the commission check. You just need to make sure this check is correct. And again, your job is to be sure that the conditions of the contract have been satisfied. What should you bring from the closing and give to your office admin person? A signed copy of the HUD, Signed copy of the CL100 letter. The commission check. <laughs> the title insurance check if it's an agent owned alliance attorney. And if it is one of our alliance attorneys, then you want the signed disclosure form that the buyer does or does not want the owner's title insurance. You've got to have a cop signed copy of the CL100 if a CL100 was required and a copy of the HUD in order to get your commission check. Now, after closing, what do we do? Your commission check will be processed and you will receive your commission check no later than the next business day. A quality service letter and form will be sent to your client or customer asking them to rate your services as well as those of the mortgage company and the closing attorney. Your office admin will then enter the closing information into our computer and take care of filing it away for safekeeping. Congratulations, you have had a ratified contract and a successful closing. We all look forward to those, don't we? <laughs>